Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so I'm going to talk about K3D, uh, free 3D modeling and animation package. Uh, starting with a small overview of my presentation, I'll first uh, introduce uh, what K3D is about. Um, next, I'll show how to use a standard plugin uh, in uh, K3D. Uh, the main chapter of this presentation is actually uh, to show you how to write your own plugin. And finally, we will see how to use this new plugin, and then I will end with a conclusion, which is, of course, that K3D is amazing. So, what is K3D? It's a free 3D modeling and uh, animation package, uh, which was written by uh, Tim Shedd. Uh, he started the project uh, around uh, 1992. Uh, K3D does modeling and animation. The actual for the actual rendering, it relies on external rendering engines such as Axis, which uh, implements the Pixar Renderman interface. Renderman engines are supported out of the box, and we also have some plugins for some non-Renderman engines. Uh, it uh, has a very modular design, which means uh, basically everything is a plugin, including user interface. Uh, different plugins uh, interact with each, each other through a fairly unique uh, visual programming system which allows you to make uh, a sort of a tree which uh, interconnects uh, different nodes. Uh, so, how do we use a standard plugin? Um, we start uh, from the create menu, which is basically a big menu uh, containing all uh, the plugins available. Uh, in this case, we will import an alias wavefront object. So we go to the mesh reader category and uh, choose the alias wavefront uh, loader plugin. Once uh, we have uh, chosen this plugin, we get uh, to see the properties panel, which actually shows all the inputs uh, and parameters uh, for the plugin chosen. Most importantly here, of course, uh, the file name. Once we go on to set the file name, uh, the object gets loaded and is shown in the viewport. Um, now we're going to uh, apply an additional modifier, which is done by right-clicking the model. We get again all the plugins that can be used as a modifier, and in this case we apply the uh, subdivision surface modifier, which creates an interactive, smoothed version of uh, the object we imported. So next, uh, on to the uh, important part, which is actually how to create new plugins. I'll start off with uh, a small overview of what uh, the basic uh, components of a plugin are. So you basically just start off in a new directory, which can be external to the K3D source tree. Uh, the first thing you have to define is a CMake file. Oh. So the CMake file uh, simply contains uh, two calls to uh, predefined CMake uh, macros uh, and basically define the name of the plugin and tell the build system where to find uh, our new plugin. Uh, next is a module.cpp file, uh, which will contain the actual code um, of our uh, new plugin. Um, it can contain uh, one or more classes, which uh, for a plugin in the document should all inherit from the K3D inode interface. Um, in this class, we can define different uh, so-called properties, which will actually store the data for the plugin, and which will also allow inputs, outputs, and parameters uh, to be set. Uh, finally, we also need to define a uh, factory class, which will be used to uh, instantiate new uh, instances of our plugin. Uh, as an example, I will show you how to create a simple mirror tool, which will uh, mirror uh, points along uh, one or more components. So, the first thing we uh, have to do is to uh, declare our uh, interface we will be using. Since we will be uh, deforming mesh points, we will be flipping components of each uh, point in the mesh. I chose to use a mesh deformation modifier here, which permits to easily uh, do this action on a mesh. Uh, so we declare a class uh, which inherits from our base class, which is part of the SDK, and type def uh, the base uh, class uh, for convenience. Uh, next, we have to define some uh, parameters to our new plugin. 
Uh, in this case, I will define three uh, Boolean uh, parameters which uh, specify if uh, the points should be mirrored along the x, y, and z axis. I've only shown uh, the x component here because the others are exactly the same. So, uh, in order to declare a property, we call the K3D data macro, which uh, actually is a, a shortcut uh, to a otherwise complicated template uh, declaration of an, uh, a series of nested uh, template uh, arguments, which in fact define different policy classes. So the first argument is a type of the property, boolean in this case. Next, the policy about the property name. Uh, the name is important because it will be used in scripting um, and for serialization to file. In this case, we choose that the name should not be possible to change. In case our Boolean value changes, we want to emit a change signal. So we uh, specify the change signal uh, policy. When uh, modified, we want to be able to undo our changes. So we simply specify with undo, so it will be taken into account in the standard undo redo system in K3D. Local storage means that the Boolean value is actually stored inside the property. It's not referred to by a pointer or anything like that. Um, no constraint means uh, we don't constrain the uh, property value. In case of a Boolean, uh, that would not be very useful. But in case of a double or a, a integer value, uh, it is uh, useful to be able to define constraints so we can limit uh, the, the values uh, to a certain range property is uh, going to be writable, obviously, uh, otherwise you wouldn't be able to change it. But serialization means that uh, the property will automatically get uh, saved into the K3D document file uh, if we specify with serializa serialization. Okay, so this uh, is, the, or the basic, uh, is the basic declaration of our new uh, class for the plugin. Next, uh, we have to implement uh, the constructor for our class, which uh, always takes two arguments, one for the factory to create the plugin and one for the document it will be part of. We simply pass those on to our base class. Next, we have to initialize our three properties. Again, I'm only showing one of them. Uh, the owner uh, is the container of the property. Obviously, in this case, uh, this will be our uh, new plugin itself. So we use this pointer. Uh, next, we initialize the name, and uh, for the X component, I use mirror underscore X. This can be referred to in the Python scripting later on, and will also be saved into uh, the file. Uh, the label is what will be shown in the user interface. Uh, it's uh, mirror X, a little prettier than the name. Next, we uh, initiate a description, uh, which uh, contains, uh, which is shown in the tooltip once uh, it shows up in the user interface. And we give an initial value of true. Uh, constructor body then has to uh, take into account that we have to update the mesh uh, if the property changes. So we simply connect, connect to the 6C++ uh, change signal that is emitted uh, by our new property. Next, uh, the important part, in fact, uh, the real code of our uh, plugin. Uh, since we inherited from the mesh deformation modifier, we uh, get to implement the on-deform mesh modifier, which uh, has as arguments all the inputs uh, for the mesh, including uh, the list of input points and the list of output points we have to store to. So in this case, uh, of course, the math is extremely simple. Uh, we simply loop over all, all the points, and if the corresponding property is set, we flip the component and we store the points in the output array. An important part of this code is the pipeline value here. So our mirror x here is a property, which means that it can have an internal value, but it can also be connected through the user interface to another input. Specifying pipeline value here means that we want uh, the final results of uh, all the connections that are made uh, to establish the value of a property, which is a, a very powerful tool, obviously. So the last thing we have to do is to take care of pl uh, plugin registration. Uh, and in order to do this, we uh, define a factory. Um, this contains an interface list, which uh, is used to keep track of what uh, capabilities each plugin has. In this case, it is both a mesh source and a mesh sync, because it can 
take mesh data as input and outputs new mesh data. Uh, we also have to give it a unique ID. There's a small tool based on uh, libuuid that generates a 64-bit unique ID for each plugin, which is used uh, to recover uh, the plugins from uh, documents. Uh, we give it a name, a uh, description that will, will again be the tooltip, a category, and we mark it as uh, experimental if we're not entirely sure that uh, it uh, already works completely in the way it's supposed to. Finally, we call the registration macro, which actually sets an uh, entry point to the module. Since it will be compiled as a shared object, uh, we have to give an entry point for DL Open to uh, load the module into K3D. Okay, so now how can we use a new plugin? Again, we go to the create menu. After we have rebuilt uh, K3D, uh, our external plugin will be shown in the deformation category, which we entered on the previous slide. See here, deformation category and the different names, they imme immediately and automatically show up in the user interface. It's marked as experimental as uh, requested. Again, uh, after creation, uh, the properties panel shows up and we find our three properties as we declared also automatically taken into the user interface with the first one set default true, the other is default false. Now, uh, nothing is happening yet. We still have our previously loaded mesh, but it's uh, unaltered uh, because we haven't set uh, the input yet. In order to do that, as you can see, there's no possibility to enter a value or anything. We have to click the connect button. So if we click the connect button next to uh, the property, uh, we can connect to our original mesh. Uh, and when once this is done, uh, the mesh gets updated and we get our two twins uh, immediately integrated into uh, the pipeline. So if we modify part of the original mesh on the left, the mesh on the right uh, changes uh, along with it uh, interactively. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the modular design of K3D makes it very easy uh, to get started uh, writing your own code. You don't have to worry too much about uh, the framework and everything. It's, it's very easy uh, to dive right in and to write a plugin that does uh, what you want to do. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity there. Um, we are not, uh, not at all feature complete yet. so. Uh, Currently, most tools are based on modeling. Um, there's still a lot of work to do, uh, for instance, in the texturing department, uh, NURBS modeling and so on is uh, not, uh, not fully supported yet. Uh, all the basic components uh, are there in the SDK, just waiting for someone to write plugins uh, on top of them, uh, for instance, to, to allow modifying NURBS objects, uh, UV parameters, um, physics integration, uh, deformation bones, those are all things uh, you will find in uh, competing open source packages uh, such as Blender, but which are not yet uh, integrated into K3D. Uh, the framework is there, uh, and for the, uh, the moment we uh, are working hard on uh, finalizing our modeling uh, system, and then we will move on uh, to the animation functionality. Uh, but there's plenty of opportunity uh, for uh, improvement. Uh, if you want more information, you can visit our website uh, or sub subscribe to our mailing list. Uh, we will also likely, hopefully, uh, take part again in the Summer of Code this year. So uh, if you're a student and you're interested in participating, um, we should have some more news on that uh, pretty soon. Uh, okay, thank you uh, for your attention. I'll be uh, down there uh, for questions if you have any. Thank you.